A blessed day to everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Tina Ryan, and I will be the host of today's press conference of New Heaven and New Earth Philippines, or Shinchunji Church of Jesus, the Temple of the Tabernacle of the Testimony. Shinchunji Church is a non-denominational Christian church headquartered in South Korea and was established on March 14, 1984, headed by Chairman Man Hee Lee. The Korean word Shinchunji translates to New Heaven, New Earth, which is inspired by Revelation chapter 21. Last October 18, Shinchinji Church launched its webinar series entitled Testimony on Prophecy and Fulfillment of the Book of Revelation, God's New Covenant, which is being aired live every Monday and Thursday, 9 a.m. via Zoom, Facebook, and YouTube until December 27. The series is being held internationally in 24 languages, including Tagalog. Uncertainty is on the rise today, brought about by the pandemic and COVID misinformation. Rumors are circulating among religious community that the COVID vaccine is the mark of the beast, which is an apocalyptic term from Revelation chapter 13 of the Bible. Even people outside of the Christian world are starting to wonder if the pandemic signifies the end of the world. Amid these speculations, Shinchinji Church is holding the webinar series to proclaim that the prophecies of the book of Revelation have started fulfilling in South Korea and now across the globe. The church aims to explain every verse of every chapter, along with the corresponding realities that have appeared according to the prophecy. I am honored to introduce to you today a religious leader and a world peace advocate who has been to the Philippines 10 times. All the way from South Korea is none other than the chairman himself. Let us all welcome Mr. Man He Lee. Hello. I am a rep the representative of Shinchenji Church of Jesus, Lee Man He. I am delighted that I am able to meet you today and communicate with you this way. Thank you so much. Thank you for gracing us with your presence today, Chairman Lee. And now we will proceed to the question and answer segment. We were able to receive a number of questions <coughs> from our guest journalists beforehand. And due to the limited time that we have, we will only be presenting some of the questions today. The questions which will not be answered during the press conference, will be answered via email. Our first question comes from Leopoldo Buenavente of OneTV.net. Why is the book of Revelation very figurative or so-called symbolical? Isn't it called Revelation? Shouldn't it be easier to understand for Christians? And why is a deeper understanding yeah. necessary for this? Everyone, I have been to the Philippines many times, and I have been around the world over 30 times, but the Philippines is the country that I have been to the most. And I also know the situation of the Philippines very well. And this is why the Philippines has a special place in my heart. And I've met many of the pastors there. But at that time, I wasn't in a position to speak of religious matters. About this question today, I would like to give you an answer. In the Philippines, I'm not sure if you are aware of um, the revelation. The word revelation means to open and to show. What are we opening? 
This is a book that has recorded what God will be fulfilling at the end time. This is a book that was recorded by God. And this is a book that God is holding in his right hand, and it is sealed with seven seals. So no one, not a single person, knows or can read this book because it is God's book. But the word revelation means to open what is sealed and to fulfill what is inside and to show the reality of what is fulfilling. So the Korean word for revelation means to open and to show. Therefore, what is recorded in God's book has been fulfilled, and so the reality of it is being shown. Now, can this be shown in one go to the world? This is why it is shown to one person, and it is let known, and through this person, what is shown is testified to many people. This is why people um, are not easy to understand this. Now to open and to show what is recorded in this book of God is what he will fulfill. So what is recorded is opened and shown. And so what is fulfilled is what is shown. And so when these things were prophesied, he promised that these things will fulfill. And when the time of fulfillment comes, we are supposed to see this and believe. This is what God asks of us. God is the creator of heaven and earth. So obviously he is much better than the regular human being. Every single thing that he prophesied will be fulfilled. Now, regarding this question, um, there is also another question. Why do we need to know this book? Do we really have to know this book of Revelation? Yes, that is the other question. And I have was also asked about Revelation. And there's really not much more I can say, but if they, I can add anything, it is not um, just by opening the book doesn't mean that you can understand it. This book, when recorded by God, he did not record things literally. He used parables in recording this book. There, is there a reason that God did this? Yes, there is. People have a hard time understanding this, and they don't know this very well. Um, religion um, does not really fit into the logic of the world. There is God and there is creation. And this created being wanted to be the creator, which is why there has been a battle between the creator and this created being, a false god. Therefore, what is being fulfilled by God is not the work of the world, but it is the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. Now, if the enemy finds out about this, he will disturb this work. That's why these things were recorded in parables. And this is why this book was sealed with seven seals and God held it in his right hand. But when the time comes, meaning when the time comes that this truth is spread and preached to the whole world, he will fulfill everything. At the time when things are fulfilled, one person sees and hears everything. And it is shown to him how this book is open, 
and how everything is fulfilled. This book is fed to him. And so this book from the hand of God goes to the hand of Jesus. From Jesus' hand, it goes to the angel's hand. And from the angel, everything that has been fulfilled in the book is given and fed to this person, to the witness. Therefore, this book, open book, is in the stomach of the witness. It is not with God. It is not with Jesus. It is not with the angel. It is inside the person who has witnessed everything. He witnesses everything that has been fulfilled according to the book, and he testifies to the people who did not see them fulfill. Through this testimony, it's the only way people can know. So everything is shown to him. This book is fed to him. Everything that has been fulfilled according to this word must be testified by this person. But in this world, many people call themselves religious. But some people have never read the book of Revelation. Or even if they have read it, they do not understand it. So what is the difference between someone who has read the book and someone who has never read the book? Therefore, in order to let this book be known, people have to go through the introductory, the intermediate and advanced lessons and receive this education in order to understand. In order to see the reality that has fulfilled and everything can be explained to them. Now, if there was no enemy that hindered this work, there would be no use for this. However, because of the enemy, all of these things were recorded in parables compared to many different objects in the world. But before these things are opened and shown, no one can know. Another thing that I would like to say The reason of, of, for our faith is Jesus. He is someone who existed 2,000 years ago. He was the son of God. He wasn't the son of a human being. He was the son of God. What did he do when he came here on earth? In the Old Testament, God prophesied what he will fulfill. The book that he prophesied, this scroll was received by Ezekiel in Ezekiel chapter 3. This is Jesus. And Jesus also testified Now, if Jesus did not receive this book and there was no reality that fulfilled, then he wouldn't have been able to testify anything. However, every word of this book has been fulfilled. A reality has appeared. What has fulfilled has appeared. Which is why Jesus also said that it is finished in John chapter 19, verse 30. Everything, what is finished is the fulfillment of everything that was prophesied in the Old Testament. And today, the book of Revelation is a record of what will be fulfilled. And it is sealed so that no one could know, and only God is holding this book. Because it is sealed with seven seals, no one can know. But this book was given to Jesus. Jesus fulfilled what is inside the book. And when this is fulfilled, one person sees the reality of the fulfillment. The sealed book is opened by Jesus. And so this open book is fed to somebody. And this testimony is given to many people by this one person. Now, these many people of the New Testament need to go to the person 
who has received and has eaten the book in order to understand what has fulfilled and what is the reality of these things. Because this is what is recorded in the Bible, so this is what we have to do. And so another thing I'd like to say today is in the book of Revelation is recorded what is supposed to fulfill. And the fulfillment is the food that all religious people have to eat. And this is the actual entity or the reality that we should all understand. So Shincheonji has been created according to the book of Revelation, as if the revelation was a stamp and we were stamped out according to the book of Revelation. Is there any other place that has been created in this way? But the place that has been fulfilled according exactly to what was prophesied to fulfill in the book of Revelation is God's kingdom and God's people. We must know this. Another thing This book, which is composed of 22 chapters, but what is contained here is how one era passes away and a new one begins. So this is the most important book, and it is recorded in parables. But when we hear this, it's not like the words that we hear in the world. So it is difficult to believe. However, this is the greatest work of God. And for those who hear this word and understand it, this will be the food that will sustain us and our life. So if you have any more questions, then please let me know. What does the Battle of Armageddon mean? And does it refer to which countries might be? Yes, I will answer that, that question. So, uh, worldly knowledge is different from heavenly knowledge. There is a place called Armageddon. It is in Israel. I've been there. And there is a place called Armageddon. And people So people like Solomon lived there, and this was a battleground during that time. But Israel really wanted to hold on to this land, and so he made it, so they made it into a hill. And so when I was there, I was passing through the underground passage. So this place is called Armageddon. This is a battlefield. So this Armageddon that we see in Revelation chapter 16, does this refer to a battle that is happening in that physical place? It's not. This battlefield was called Armageddon at that time. But today, the place where there is a war is expressed in the name Armageddon as a comparison. This is not the literal place. And this wasn't the first war that happened there. But the Armageddon that we see in the book of Revelation 
is a place that is similar because there is a battle that happens there. That's why it's called Armageddon in the book of Revelation. So where is this battlefield? There is a place like this in Korea where there is a battle. A war happens here. What is this war? Is this a physical war? And what countries are involved in this war? This is a war with Satan. This is a religious war. Why is it a religious war? In Revelation chapter 12, there is a war against the group of the dragon and those who belong to God. There is a battle and they fought with the testimony of Jesus and the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, this is a religious war. This is not America or Russia. This is not that kind of war. People have not heard from God and they speak their own thoughts. This is a huge work of God and they are uh, making mistakes by speaking the, in this manner. However, this is not what it is. This battle in Armageddon is a parable that compares it to a religious war. And this is not a war between countries, but these are religious groups. There are so many denominations in the world. From the Catholic Church, many Protestant churches came out, and now there are countless denominations. Therefore, this is a war between religions. In Matthew chapter 24, there is mention of a war. So which countries are involved here? Because certainly there are countries involved. However, this is referring to those who belong to God and those who belong to the devil. Even if we are talking about Christian churches, which spirits are working? Is it the Holy Spirit of God or is it an evil spirit? That is the battle. And this is the truth. I am the one who has seen and heard. I am not God. I am not Jesus. I'm not even a pastor. I did not study in a theology school. I am a poor farmer from the country. I'm just a farmer. But after I was done with my military service, I remembered how I used to pray with my grandfather when I was a boy. My grandfather would go out into the field and he would bring a bowl of water and pray in front of it, looking up to heaven. I prayed with my grandfather when I was young and I remembered this. And so during the Korean War, as I was fighting this battle, I've seen many horrible things. Many people died, but I survived this war and I am grateful. I, I think that it's because I prayed to God that I was able to live through that. So I went to the country and I built a hut and I prayed morning and evening. But one evening, a, a star appeared, a star that was much bigger than me. And it was so bright that I couldn't even look at it. Like how Apostle Paul, when he was shown the vision, he was blinded. It was similar. I was very surprised, and I didn't really know what to do. So I ran to the, the hut where my dad was sleeping, and I woke him up. Father, Father, the star is here. A star is here. My father also saw the star and he also was surprised because it was such a huge star and it was right in front of us and it was so bright, it was hard to look at it. So we were all shocked by this. And he said, back in the day, they said when an important person is to appear, a star would appear as well. So maybe this is going to happen in our country as well. But this happened for three nights in a row 
And by the guidance of the star, I went up a mountain and I made a promise before God with my blood that I will follow him, that I will be loyal to him, that I will serve him. And this is how my faith began. So the book of Revelation is a book of prophecy. These contain, contain here are things that will fulfill in the future. And when they fulfill, Jesus said also in John chapter 5, verse 17, that he saw what God fulfilled. Can anyone deny this? Jesus is the one who ate the scroll as well. In Revelation chapter 10, the book that was sealed was taken by Jesus. He opened it and he fed it to somebody. And so this person sees everything that Jesus fulfills. And then he is told to testify to the churches. Are Christian churches just in Korea? Religion is not exclusive to Korea. These things are all over the world. Therefore, I'm not sure if you know this. I think the Philippines and the Filipinos would know. We have, a, we have an ambassador. a promotional ambassador, and this time we are testifying from Revelation chapter 1 to chapter 22, and we requested to please publicize that we are testifying about this book. In the Bible, in Revelation chapter 11, verse 15, it says that with the last trumpet sound or seventh trumpet sound, the kingdom of the world becomes the kingdom of God. And so in the Philippines, I believe the media reported on this. The Philippines heard the 12 tribes testifying about these things. And if you haven't, why didn't you hear this? We master the book of Revelation. What that means is we know the meaning of the prophecies. We have seen what has fulfilled, and we are testifying about these words. Without a single mistake, as if it was stamped out from the book of Revelation, clearly. However, if there is any mistake, we ask them to please tell us. All 12 tribe leaders are doing this and they are asking this of the world. Are any of the denominations of the world doing this right now? Are other religions doing this right now? This covenant of God will fulfill as it is recorded. He promised in the Old Testament that Canaan will be conquered. Moses led the Israelites to Canaan, and Joshua, with the Israelites, conquered this land. Today, this book of Revelation, which is to be fulfilled at the end time, will also fulfill. We can't say we know with the little that we know. This word that God said he will fulfill cannot be talked about in this way and that way according to our own, th own thoughts. And if we say things that are not true, whose pastor would this person be? We need to see this clearly, hear this, and testify correctly. But if this is testified in whatever manner, according to their own thoughts, 
this should not be done. And so if you testify about the book of Revelation, these are things that will fulfill at the end of the world. We Therefore, we should know, we should make an effort to understand this, we should listen. This isn't words that are coming from the world. This is something that we need to learn. God, for this work, made his one and only begotten son bear the cross and bleed. For this work, he did this. For Jesus, Jesus also bled for this new covenant. Yes. Can we move on to the next question now, please? Our next question comes from Ken Cabaltera of Idol FM Vico. Among many similar groups here in the Philippines, how is Shinchinji, New Heaven and New Earth, Church of Jesus, different? Yes. Yes. Jesus, what did Jesus say when he came? He said that it is a sin to say that you know. Look at every verse of Revelation. This is not recorded in order for us to understand. I said earlier that this is recorded in parables. In Revelation chapter 9, there is a sixth trumpet that is blown. And there are troops that come out, mounted troops. But from the mouth of these mounted troops, fire and sulfur come out and a third of the people are killed. Now this horse also has a tail. And the tail has a horse, has a head rather. And it also spews fire. And a third of the people are killed. Have you seen this kind of horse? I have seen this and I am telling you, I have seen. I am not here to lie and I'm not here to impress people. Do you understand what is written here? I have seen from Revelation chapter 1 to Revelation chapter 22, this book was taken by Jesus. He removed every seal and I have witnessed Jesus fulfill everything inside the book. In Revelation chapter 22, verse 8, please read this verse. And please look at every chapter of this book. See if there is one person who witnessed everything. There is someone there. Now, if you speak about these things according to your own thoughts and say this is this and this is that, could that be correct? You need to speak after you have seen and heard. You are not God. So how can you say this and that? This doesn't make sense. Now, in the book of Revelation, when every chapter is fulfilled, Jesus received the book from God, and every time he fulfills something, the reality appears. And one sees what the actual entities are that appeared. This is the person who has been fed the open book. This person is sent to the churches and commanded to testify. Now, this person is called the messenger of Jesus. In Revelation chapter 22, verse 16, you can see this. Now, this is not a joke. Now, a person who has not seen this, who has not heard this, when they speak of these things, can they be correct? And who told them to do that? Did God ask him to do that? Did Jesus ask him to do that? Even if you get one thing wrong, you become the pastor of the devil. This is a lie. 
Isn't that true? Why do we have to do this? I have seen and heard, and even then, I have traveled around the world 31 times, and yet I did not talk about religion. I did one time, and this was in the Philippines. A pastor, he said he was in the U.S. and he was the best. And he told me to explain Matthew chapter 24. And so I did. And that's it. That's it. I never, I always wanted to talk about God while I was traveling. However, how can I? These people could not understand. I just did the peace work, the peace movement. Ask the people that I've met. I never talked about religion. Is it because I didn't see or hear? No. However, Jesus also spoke of what he saw and heard of the Old Testament. So in that way, today, what needs to be spoken is what was seen and heard. And even then, I am very nervous, but I might get things wrong. But how can someone who has not seen and heard, how can someone who has not received and eaten the word, you have to eat the word in order to be a walking book of revelation. Isn't that right? Yes. And that is why you cannot casually speak of these things. You will be a false pastor. And if you do this, you must repent before God. You must repent and say, it's because I, I did not know. And we must pray to God. Because he will say, why did you speak these things without hearing from the witness? However, in the 6,000 year history of God, I am the only person who has eaten this book. So how can anyone else talk about this and that about this book? This should not be. This doesn't make sense. So let me say, in Revelation chapter 2 and 3, there are seven messengers that were raised by Jesus. Jesus refers to them as the seven stars, the seven golden lampstands. So he established these seven stars, seven messengers. Who are these people? What is their name? What do they look like? When were they established? Do, they, do you know? Please tell me. If you saw, you would know. You would know their names. Isn't that true? Right? I speak because I know. And because these people were on the wrong path, I sent them letters. Did you send letters? Jesus chose one person and he commanded him to send letters to the seven messengers. And the reason for sending them letters is to tell them to fight and overcome. Because the pastor of the devil, the Nicolaitans, were inside the tabernacle. Do you know who the Nicolaitans are? Do you know their names, what they look like? If you don't know, then you cannot teach about this. And so, we need to repent. If you haven't seen and if you haven't heard, then this cannot be the truth. Only the person who has received and eaten the book, only the person who has been chosen and commanded by God and Jesus can, be talk, can talk about this. Next question, please. And now, Chairman Lee, we would like to ask you a few questions that were commonly asked by our friends from the press. According to the Revelation webinar, the prophecies about this book are happening now. What is your evidence for this? 
Yes, it's true. What you said is true. Inside the book of Revelation, what is recorded is are things that will be fulfilled. Inside the book of Revelation, in the 22 chapters, we see the group of the dragon. We see people who belong to God. There is war. The people who belong to God there are people who betray who belong to God, like in Matthew chapter 24. So all of these things are inside the book of Revelation. But however, if you add or subtract anything from this book, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. God is a very strict God. If we make a joke out of God's word, this is not right. God is not that kind of God. Things must fulfill according to the book of Revelation. The seven messengers that are prophesied in the book of Revelation, I saw and I know them. These messengers in Revelation chapter 13, there is a beast that came in that is called the group of the dragon. I fought against them, and I overcame them. I saw this. I was there. So this is what it means when something fulfills. What has been recorded actually becomes reality today. Therefore, I've seen the seven messengers. I've seen the betrayer, the, the betrayers who worship the beast in Revelation chapter 13. I've seen all of this. I've touched them. I fought against them. So I don't know how you will take this, but in Revelation chapter 12, there is a male child who is born of the woman and this male child and his brothers fight against the group of the dragon and they overcome. And therefore, from that moment on, God's power and salvation and his kingdom fulfills. And so people who said and claim that they were saved prior to this time have to answer to this because this had not fulfilled. So how can you say that you are saved? Can, they, can we say that they're of the right mind? Because Revelation needs to fulfill. Chapter 12, 13, they all need to fulfill. Only if we fight and overcome the group of the dragon, will there be salvation and the kingdom of God. And, th and therefore, this truth is shown to us by God, and he's making us believe. And so if there are no actual entities to the word that is spoken, The realities and actual entities of the book of Revelation must appear. I have seen this. I know them. There is evidence of these words. And that is why I am able to speak about them. But what we must think about is if you add or subtract, if we look in Revelation chapter 22, verses 18 to 19, it says, if we do this, we cannot enter heaven. We will be cursed. So did you add or subtract to the book? If you did, you should not be speaking of these things and you must repent. The 12 tribe leaders recently and are now testifying about the book. And they ask, if there are any mistakes, please let them know. If there's anything wrong that was said in the testimony, The world right now, we are inviting them to sign an MOU with us. People are coming to us for this MOU and, for, and they're asking us to teach them. And 
However, these people are not people who have been born of God's seed. In Matthew chapter 13, we can see that two kinds of seed were sown. The one who was born of God's seed is harvested, and those who are not harvested is because they're born of the devil's seed, and therefore they're not able to go to heaven. And so if you don't know the book of Revelation, will you be harvested? And if you're not, we need to repent. The time of revelation is the, the end time. Adam's world came to an end during Noah's time. Or it's like when judgment was given at the time of Lot. People were marrying, they were drinking, they were being given to marriage. However, during a time like this, judgment was given to them. Therefore, when all of these words and the fulfillment is being testified, we should at least check, we should at least verify if this is true. This is what we must do. Therefore, we must not add or subtract. And if we don't know, then we must not pretend that we know. Because if you speak in this manner, then you will be a false pastor. The one that testifies is someone who has seen and heard and someone who has chosen. Next question, please. Some people believe that the COVID vaccine is the 666, the so-called mark of the beast. What is your stand regarding this? Yes. So this 666, is this something that this person Is this coming from God that 666 is the mark or the COVID vaccine is the mark of the beast? I think this comes from the enemy. These people are unbelievable. I don't think these words come from God. Let's stop this. Let me tell you and please listen. In the Old Testament, before Jesus came, it is prophesied that two kinds of seed will be sown for a new work and that a new covenant will be made. And then Jesus came and he sowed the seed of God. The devil also sowed his seed in the same field. This is what we see in Matthew chapter 13. However, in the second coming of Jesus, the ripened fruits, the ripened grain will be harvested. They will be sealed. They will be sealed with the revealed word. And the 12 tribes will be created. Now, 12 tribes, these are mentioned in, this is according to the will of God. And therefore, there have to be 12 tribes. It, just sowing the seed is not the end. There is a harvest. That is why there is a harvest, and the harvest is said to be the end of the age. They are harvested, they are sealed, and the 12 tribes are created. So this is fulfilled because there is a harvest, and there is mention of sealing, so shouldn't this be fulfilled as well? Why don't we believe this? Who else are you going to believe? Ourselves? We must not say these things. Now, 12 tribes. This, these tribes are created after the betrayal of the chosen people in Revelation chapter 6. So this happens in Revelation chapter 7. The sealed people here are the 12 tribes, the 144,000. Now, the, when the 144,000 are sealed, what happens? 
the Revelation chapter 7 starts with the phrase after this, meaning it happens after Revelation chapter 6. So after the 144,000 are sealed, this is the event that is referred to in this chapter, Revelation chapter 7. But after this, there is a great tribulation. And in this great tribulation, a countless multitude comes out. Now, at this time, there is a pandemic. We can go about our daily lives. We can go to church. So where does the countless multitude come out from? Don't you wonder about this? Now, the Great Tribulation happens after the 144,000 are sealed, which means that there is there are, a one, there are 144,000 who are sealed. Now, now, regarding these events, many people say many different things, whatever they want to say. They just put words any kinds of words into their mouths. But about this great tribulation, what did God say? Because unless it's what God said, we can't say whatever we want. It said that there is in Revelation chapter 7, there is a great tribulation. There is a, an hour of trial that come upon the whole world. So this is, these are similar things. It's a time of testing. So this COVID-19, this pandemic, is the great tribulation. And regardless, if it wasn't the COVID-19, it would have been something else. The Bible doesn't say if this was the intention of God, that this was God's idea. We only know that after the 144,000 are sealed, there will be a great tribulation. And out of this great tribulation, a great multitude will come out. In Revelation chapter 11, verse 15, the seventh trumpet is sounded and the, and the kingdom of the world becomes the kingdom of God. And so are these events for the great multitude to come out? And so should God give this kind of suffering in the form of great tribulation? This is not what I think. God is not the cause of this great tribulation. There is an enemy. And of course, God knows that God that the enemy will create something like this, this time of great tribulation. Are there betrayers because God tells them to betray? Do they destroy because God tells them to destroy? To destroy, rather? The responsibility is not with God. This is not God's idea. And so during this time of great tribulation, conversely, what God does is he uses this to save many people. That is the message of this event. Because many people come out and they are saved. And so using these events in the book, we can't say this or that according to what we want to say. And so... Regarding 666 and about Revelation, this is in Revelation chapter 13, which was explained during the Revelation series seminar. This is a parable that uses King Solomon. And so we must not say whatever we want about these things. We cannot see things according to our own thoughts.
We cannot assume things and we cannot guess on what will happen or what these events are. For these kinds of people, they must fix themselves first, mentally. And so this COVID virus is not 666. There have been many uh, pandemics in the past. This is not the first time the world is going through something like this. And so was were those pandemics caused by God? Whether it was the enemy or whoever it is, the point is that many people will come out of this great tribulation. What matters is that these things are according to the prophecy. If there is mention of a destroyer, it is because there is a destroyer that is mentioned in the book. But the destroyer wasn't created by God. This great tribulation was not created by God. And so this is what we must know. Let us not say this and that when we are not sure. Next question, please. Our next question is from Vermont Calis of Bandera News TV, Cotabato. What are some of the things that your group can contribute to the whole world? And what are the things you want to accomplish in the next years to come? Everyone, Jesus fulfilled the Old Testament and he prophesied what will fulfilled in the second coming and then he left. Many people of the world, things are let known to many people of the world, things that they do not know and the word of life of God is made known to them. And we are making known what God has fulfilled according to what he said he will fulfill. And so through this, we are able to go to heaven and live eternally. This is the greatest objective and hope of any religious person. But aside from this, We must serve other people and we must make peace a reality. And we must stop wars in the world and give peace as a legacy to the future generations. Therefore, I promised with the people of the world that I will make peace a reality. And for this, there needs to be an international law that needs to be established. And for the religious, I am asking all of them, all religious of the world, to please be one with us. And this is the promise that I made before God. When there is war, people die. I myself have fought in a war. I've served in the military. One time, I explained these things in a cemetery. In the cemetery where the people who served with me were died and buried. Therefore, war in the world needs to come to an end. And we need to make peace a reality. There is no bigger work than this. To fulfill this, we must be messengers of peace, each one of us. Messengers of peace. This is why in HWPL, former and current presidents 
senators, politicians. All of these people have signed peace agreements with us to work with us and make this a reality. I'm sure some of you are aware. So all of these people signed an MOU so that we can work together. There are 55 leaders from Africa who signed this. In the Pacific Islands, the leaders from that place also signed an MOU. There is no bigger work than this. Cessation of war and world peace. If there were no pandemic right now, this law would have been passed in the UN already and maybe it would have become a legitimate law. But we have made 10 articles and 38 clauses of the Declaration of Peace and Cessation of War, and this has been made known to the world. This is the biggest work. Jesus also came, also went to Jerusalem and said that he wished they knew about this work. They knew of peace. And he also said, that whoever believes in me believes in God. So there is no greater service than this. There is nothing more precious than this. And so all of you who are hearing this, please be messengers of peace and let us give peace as a gift to the future generations and serve other people. We have one final question that came in from our media friends. Uh, we heard that many pastors from all over the world are signing an MOU with your church. What is your objective in doing this and how would the pastors benefit from this? Oh. Many pastors of the world, are you asking about pastors of the world in the Philipp uh, pastors of the Philippines who are signing an MOU? I believe the whole world, Chairman Lee. The 12 tribe leaders, when they testified the entire book of Revelation, We don't know if these pastors were moved by the testimony. However, they are coming to us and requesting that we sign an MOU. And so our branch churches in the world, I understand, are signing MOUs with pastors around the world. And this is a collaborative effort between the pastors and our church. Theology schools are also asking for us to send instructors. Now, those who are not born of God's seed needs to be born again through God's seed. Those who aren't harvested must be harvested, and those who are not sealed must be sealed. They must belong to the 12 tribes who are the promised nation and people of God. And if you do not want to do this, then you are living a faith life of your own. And so we need to put aside our own thoughts now and we must know the promise of God. Adam did not keep the covenant. Physical Israel did not keep the covenant. That is what it says in Hosea chapter 6, verse 7. Today, Jesus made a new covenant with his blood in the night of Passover. So must spiritual Israel also betray this covenant with Jesus? Let's keep this covenant. What is this covenant? It is the book of Revelation. If we add or subtract 
from this book, we cannot go to heaven. If we do and we go to heaven, then we are making God a liar. So please, let us not add or subtract. If we do not know, then we must learn it. Regarding the book of Revelation, these prophecies recorded in the book will appear as physical entities without exception. And so we should be able to point out what the actual entities of these prophecies are, each one of them. And that is what we are doing. This is what the 12 tribe leaders are doing. We are letting known what the reality of these things are. However, we are not revealing exact names because we do not want to be sued for defamation. But we know these things. And so we are allowing the signing of the MOU. We are not speaking of things that we do not know. Now, after the 12, 12 tribe leaders are done testifying about the book of Revelation, we are going back to the introductory lessons. And these lessons will be taught. I, I understand them to be about 24 lessons. And all of these things will be testified as well. Why are we doing this? Now, people could be interested in the book of Revelation. However, when they listen to the testimony, it might be hard for them to understand. And it is because they are not, they did not go through the process of the introductory lessons. Therefore, the instructors of our church will be working very hard to teach these lessons. So when the Revelation series, the webinar finishes, the introductory lessons will be shared as well. So please listen. It's like we are elementary students in the kingdom of heaven. Even if you graduated from college, in the kingdom of God, you are an elementary school student. Let us become lower and let us, humble, let us humble ourselves. Let us not be arrogant. Let us be humble. Again, I am just a farmer. I was not evangelized. The only thing I have is that I saw and heard and I speak of what I've seen and heard. Now, if there is something wrong still that I say, then I must be corrected. So please, everyone, we must become one. This is what I say, we are one. Every time I travel the world, in the 31 times that I've traveled the world, I said, we are one. We are one. This is what I did. And so all of you pastors in the Philippines, I've seen many of you personally when I went there. And so when things calm down, I would love to go back to the Philippines and see all of you. I am not after money or fame or authority. I am only interested in testifying this work of God properly because then the kingdom of God will come and then we will enter this kingdom of God and then we will live with God forever. That is all I want. I don't have anything. I have no wealth. Oh, in this kingdom of God, there is no law. There is no sin. It is only freedom and love and peace. Now, I don't have to do this, but if I don't do what God tells me to do, then it would be a sin. And this is why I'm telling you all of this today. These are not my words. These are not my own words. I only spoke of what was shown to me, what I have seen and heard by God. And there I have one request. And I would like to ask you, 
this new covenant, which is Revelation. Have you been recreated according to this? This, is, this, is, this book is about recreation. Have you been created according to this book? Who are you according to this book of Revelation? Who are you? Today is the time of Revelation's fulfillment. And today, when Revelation is being fulfilled, is the end of the world. And this time will be like the time of Noah and the time of Lot. In the time of Noah, the world of Adam came to an end. And at the we have now come to this age where it is like the time of Noah and the time of Lot. What God wants to fulfill in the book of Revelation is the 144,000 and the great multitude in white. These are the people who are saved. The betrayers, the destroyers are not saved. They end up in hell. So at this time is the time when God captures the dragon and reigns in 6,000 years. And we must live with God together. Please be healthy. And if you have questions, I will answer more. But if we have come to the end of the list of questions, then we can end here. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Lee, for answering all of our questions today. And thank you everyone for sending in your questions. It was indeed a very comprehensive discussion. We will have to wrap up at this point. We will close the Q&A segment now. Before uh, we end, we would like to invite Chairman Lee to give us his concluding words. Hello, all of you in the Philippines. My greetings to you and please stay healthy. In all the countries of the world, the Philippines is close to my heart and I have a special affection for it. And many people helped me while I was there. In the Philippines, I pray will be one in God and in God's love so that they can receive the new world that is coming and that you may all be people of the kingdom of God. This is my hope. I've been to many countries and I have held the hands of many people. And these people are in, in HWPL. This would not be an exaggeration. However, I keep lowering myself and humbling myself wondering if I am arrogant. And so I keep praying because our hope is to serve God and live with him forever. And I pray that the Philippines will be blessed by God, that it will be a country of peace and where people live well. I'm sure you are aware of what happened in Mindanao. And I pray that Mindanao will be a place where there is no more fighting and that there will be peace. And there is a peace monument that we erected there. This was a great thing, uh, a very momentous event. 
And so to our family in the Philippines, I, my hope is that we will all be one and that we can make peace a reality and that we can all live together with God. Please stay healthy. And I pray to God always that there will be good things that come to you. Thank you so much for inviting me to be part of this press conference. Please be healthy. Thank you. And with that, we have come to the end of today's press conference. We thank everyone for coming in and taking the time to join us. After this, the staff will send a press kit to your respective email addresses. The press kit will contain a press release, transcript of answers, photos, and a highlight video, which you can share on your media platforms or social media pages. We encourage everyone to share the news about today's discussion, and we would highly appreciate if you could send a photo or a link of your coverage to New Heaven and New Earth through the email address in your press kit. If you have any questions, you can reach out to New Heaven and New Earth via email or through the staff who contacted you. Thank you, and with that, we officially wrap this press conference. Once again, I'm Tina Ryan. A blessed afternoon to all of you.